and with the support of people from throughout the planet, that that penalty was finally overturned. But now, he's, he's facing life without parole for a murder he never committed. As a matter of fact, the judge on the initial case, the judge on the initial case, he made racial comments about he's going to hang that, you know what. And that's what the judge who, who was making all the decisions to decide what happened to Mumia Bujamal. But there is a renewed struggle about the possibility of him getting a new trial. Because there was a court case that was upheld, granting him the right to challenge parts of his conviction. And so today we're highlighting the, the plight of Julia, Julian Assange, of Chelsea Manning, and of Mumia Bujamal, and of all the other political prisoners. And also of thousands of others who are incarcerated through the unjust system, the criminal injustice system, where police and the wealthy get away with everything. They not only can afford the best lawyers, they can afford to pay off all the judges and prosecutors. And they have access to all the corruption of the system. Whereas almost two million, mostly poor, are serving sentences in prison. Many for economic crimes and nonviolent crimes and crimes of various forms of narcotics. Basically, that's got to end. So we're out here saying no to mass incarceration. We're out here saying free them all. Free the political prisoners. Free Julian Assange. Free Chelsea Manning. Free the Wheel of Jamal. Free the Wolf Nine. Free all the political prisoners. Whose crime was standing up to the system. And who are serving lengthy, lengthy prison terms. It, it is up to us to get each other's back. We can't struggle, we can't build a movement that struggles for change if folks think that they're going to end up being incarcerated by telling the truth, like Julian Assange and Chelsea Manning, or by sharing order with immigrants. So it's up to us to get each other's back. We say free Chelsea Manning. We say free Julian Assange. We say free Mumuio Bujamal. Free all political prisoners. And political prisoners is not something that's only in the United States. The United States supports the police and military forces throughout many countries. And it trains these forces to be tools of repression and to target dissent, to target those who take a stand and oppose oppression, who organize teachers, organize working people, organize the indigenous. There is a U.S. back war on dissent being carried out in many countries throughout the planet in addition to the United States of America. And it's up to us to get each other's back. If you know someone that's sitting in prison that ought not be there, we ought to be together and fight for freedom. Because we got too many souls incarcerated in the United States. We got an unjust system where all the wealth funnels up to a fraction of 1% of the population. And 50 to 70 percent of the population is just one paycheck away from losing their home and not being able to feed their family. And if you challenge that system, then they got all sorts of mechanisms that click into place to try to limit your ability to change things.
And one of those is incarcerating those who stand up for change. And they are known as political prisoners. The United States has been taking political prisoners since there's been a United States. COINTELPRO lives on. And that was the process of taking people who are dissenting and framing them up on bogus charges. Our rally has just increased by 50%. That shows you how fast your movement can grow. One day you're two, next minute you're three. We're out here today to say free them all. Free the political prisoners, free Julian Assange, free Chelsea Manning, free Mumia Abu-Jamal, free the Move 9, free the immigrant supporters, free the embassy protectors, drop the charges on the embassy protectors. The United States is waging war all over the planet, and that war is also being waged right here in the United States of America. And one of the major weapons of this war of counterinsurgency is mass incarceration. The United States has 6% of the world's population, incarcerate 25% of the world's prisoners. So we're supposed to be the land of the free, but we incarcerate more than anyone else, anywhere, compared to every other nation. The United States is incarcerating people at four times the rate of the rest of the planet. And that, in addition, but the unjust lives being ruined by this, that's also targeting the idea that communities can rise up and fight against their oppression. Because if you've got communities that are devastated by massive numbers of people being incarcerated, those communities are less apt, less able to be able to organize into a force to resist their own oppression. I mean, maple. Mass incarceration is counterinsurgency and is part of the U.S. war on its own population. Whenever the United States wants to go to war, we always hear, oh, this guy, this, this one or that one's at war with their own people. Well, let's get it right. The United States is and has been at war with its own people. You see it every day. We got a nation that's supposedly so wealthy, and we got people sleeping in the streets everywhere. But, but if there's a war, scrape all those billions together and go running three quarters around the world to go slaughter a quarter million people. And if someone blows the whistle on that slaughter and releases a video of the United States taking out civilians, then whoever released that video is facing a prison sentence. And whoever reports that video is facing a prison sentence. So we have to understand that as a people, we got to learn to get each other's backs. You know someone that's incarcerated and they ought not be there, we got to figure out how to get them out. And that's what we got to do for Julian Assange, Chelsea Manning, Romeo Bojamal, the Move 9, and hundreds of other political prisoners around the United States. And on top of that, we have to do that for tens of thousands of others unjustly incarcerated, for minimalists, hardly a crime, possible drug use, small-scale economic crime that didn't hurt anybody, Yet they go to prison. You got a bank that rips off billions of dollars and steals home. What happens? They get a bailout. We're out here today demanding an end to the counterinsurgency warfare by the United States, which is taking political prisoners, people who take a stand, people who blow the whistle, who end up incarcerated because they told the truth, for example, about U.S. warfare, about the United States, blowing up civilians, 
they released a video, and now Julian Assange is facing possible death penalty, possible death penalty, charged with espionage because he did what a journalist would. He was given information about U.S. war crimes. And he made that information available to media sources that ran with and published it everywhere. This is information the United States would rather us not see. Reason being, the United States wants to be able to conduct warfare. And wants to be able to slaughter people everywhere but want to tell us stories about what they want us to think happens. But they don't want us to see the truth about the mass slaughter, the bombs being dropped on people's heads every 12 minutes. That's right, every 12 minutes, bomb, a U.S. bomb drops every 12 minutes somewhere in the world. And there's people under those bombs. And the government doesn't want you to know that people are being killed accordingly. So the government is incarcerating those who bring out those troops and we're out here saying, no, free them, free them all. Now, free Assange, free Chelsea Manning, free Maria Fogemar, free to move nine, free all the political prisoners. It's up to us to get each other's back. You can't wait for the Democrats and Republicans. They'll never free the political prisoners. We need to struggle. And when people take a stand, they need to know that people on the streets are going to get their back when they face the wrath of U.S. repression and oppression and mass incarceration and threats of the death penalty for the crime of telling the truth about U.S. war crimes. That's right. The United States does not want us to see the truth about the people under the bombs that the United States drops every 12 minutes somewhere on the planet someone's getting blown up by a u.s bomb that we spent tens of thousands of dollars to create instead of spending that money on providing housing in new york for the homeless that's right we got all the money to go off to war everywhere but we can't provide for our own communities here and if someone tells the truth about that war they end up becoming indicted. 17 count indictments against Julian Assange for which he actually faces a possible death penalty. Chelsea Manning, she's being incarcerated for refusing to testify before a grand jury. This is grand jury repression and she's on the forefront fighting that repression. Calling for an end of the grand jury system. Because grand juries have been used to try to force people to snitch against the leaders and the fighters in the community. And right now, Chelsea Manning is speaking out loud and clear against the grand jury system. And she served one grand jury incarceration. They ended that grand jury. They subpoenaed her for a week later, so she was out for one week and now she's back in prison again. Mind you, she had her sentence commuted by Obama. So now she's back in, incarcerated for refusing to be a snitch to the grand jury. And it's all about the United States protecting, protecting the lie narrative that it wants to use to sell war to us over and over. Over and over. We got lied to. Right now about Iran and Venezuela, nothing but lies coming out of the Pentagon and the CIA and being beautifully reported by much of the media. But people like Chelsea Manning, people like Julian Assange, they put the truth out there and now they are incarcerated. And Julian Assange is actually facing a potential death penalty. A death penalty. And what's happened since his indictment? Australia just kicked in the doors of ABC because they wrote a report in 2017 about the war crimes in Afghanistan. A reporter in San Francisco had his doors kicked in because they're looking for the source of a story he wrote.
So this is the beginning of open warfare of the United States National Security State, our reporters. Now some of these reporters that have been backing the prosecution of Assange, they're getting nervous because they're seeing others come on the similar attack. But we're out here saying, no way, we got their back. Julian Assange, we got your back. Chelsea Manning, we got your back. Mumia Abu Jamal, we got your back. We say free them all, free the political prisoners. End mass incarceration is a form of counterinsurgency in the United States. Where people who take a stand, people who dissent, face incarceration. And not only that, people face incarceration just for being impoverished. Because you know that those who are wealthy never go to prison for the same things that the impoverished go to prison for. They don't even make it to court. The charges get dropped. But you got people sitting in prison for 40 years for a couple bags of weed, literally. You got banks that force millions of people out of their home and they get bailed out. They get money given to them by the government. And then you get truth tellers like Julian Assange and Chelsea Manning who blew the whistle on the U.S. war machine and U.S. war crimes. Julian Assange is facing the death penalty. Chelsea Manning, she's facing grand jury after grand jury, and for refusing to be a snitch, she's being incarcerated and reincarcerated, and now being fined $500 a day, later to be $1,000 a day, for refusing to testify before a grand jury. Now, grand juries have always been a way for the government to force people to snitch on each other to snitch on those who are the leaders and the fighters in communities. It's called grand jury repression. Chelsea Manning's on the front line, and we got her back. We say release Chelsea. Release Julian Assange. We say free Maria Bojamal, free the move nine. Today's the day in Newark to show solidarity with all the political prisoners. As a matter of fact, with most of the other prisoners too. Because most of them don't need to be incarcerated. Because there are too many people sitting in prison for ridiculous, hardly a crime, drugs or like some small economic thing. And you got war criminals who are getting paid. You got companies that are selling the weapons to murder people all over the planet. And when uh, reporters tell the truth about what's going on, like Julian Assange and Chelsea Manning, they get incarcerated and then Julian Assange facing a possible death sentence. We're out here saying, hell no. We're out here saying, free the political prisoners. Free Julian Assange. Free Chelsea Manning. Free Mamiya Bojamal. Free them all. They can't have the truth coming out. Because maybe then people would say, hey, this war shit, this has gotta go. If we know the truth about the war. So what happens? People who tell the truth are being incarcerated. And the war continues. And the communities that should have the benefits of the tax dollars being sent overseas to slaughter people everywhere, they're not seeing those funds because the people are not seeing the truth. Because hopefully, when we see the truth about the war crimes of the United States, we rise up and say, no way, no more. We want that money here. We don't want to be stepping over homeless people anymore. We want them to be housed with full support, monitored, medical support, psychological support, every other kind of support. That's a system that cares about its people. But we got a system where the homeless population is growing and the pile of bodies that the United States is leaving every corner of the planet is also growing. And so when you get someone like Julian Assange and Chelsea Manning, Chelsea Manning, who found some information about U.S. war crimes, 
And when that information gets out, the national security state wants to be able to control that, so if they want to be able to slaughter those folks all over the planet with impunity. And if the truth gets out, the fear is that the people in this country, and possibly the people all over the world, will say, we've had enough of this United States. We ain't gonna let you murder these people anymore. So that's why the United States tells lie after lie after lie every time there's a war, like Venezuela, like Iran. You can't believe anything they're telling you. And they make sure that if someone's out there telling the truth, that maybe they'll end up on death row, or threatened with a death sentence. Or maybe they'll end up endlessly incarcerated for refusing to be a snitch before grand juries. This is not the first time grand juries have been used as a tool of repression against folks who take a stand. Grand juries have been used, the way it works is they get somebody and they subpoena them for a grand jury and they try to get them to give evidence against the leadership of a struggle. And if they refuse, they go to prison. If they cooperate, they're helping uh, counterinsurgency against the dissent, the dissenting movement. It's up to us as a people to get each other's back. You know someone incarcerated and you believe they should not be there? We need to be doing everything we can to get them out. That includes Mumia Bojamal, the Move 9, Chelsea Manning, and Julian Assange. Yeah. How about these people that we want to, want to say right on to the New Jersey anti-war agenda for hosting this rally, trying to bring some clarity and some principle and some much needed agitation on the front of political repression that is almost being done literally in front of our faces without any real report. I was asking you to tell you about the great Maria Abu-Jabal and his relationship to the cases of Julian Assange and Chelsea Manning. There's an old saying, and I forget who actually made the saying. That when a country is at war, or at war with its own people, one of the first casualties of war is the truth. So if there is a thread that runs through the three cases that Bob is concerned about, the thread is that these are three human beings who were targeted for giving the world some very real truth about the war machine that is the U.S. empire uh, that we all uh, live under and need to be raising some noise to stay its repressive and destructive military hand. Mumia Abu-Jamal is a journalist. Julian Assange is a journalist. They were from any other country, they would be treated like heroes for speaking truth to power and for taking the principal stance, stances that each have taken. Chelsea is a whistleblower who aided a journalist, she aided. Julian Assange, because Assange got what he needed from her to sound a drum on just how devastating the consequences U.S. foreign policy is at this particular moment and all the various actions that this country is in. They, none of them should be in jail. They should all be free and they should all be uh, rallied around, not just by the people, but the institutions that say that they are the upholders of democracy and of so-called free speech. The entire journalistic order of this country ought to be outraged about what's happening to these three human beings. But see, th therein lies the rub. See, you gotta follow the money. And when you follow the money, this order is ultimately a 
corporate order, an order that is organically linked to the capitalist order. And because it, this, these uh, whistleblowers, these truth tellers, are telling some real truth about the very nature of the system, not just what is happening that is wrong, but the very nature of how it's happening, the very order that ought to support them, that ought to be at their back, that ought to be mobilized and outraged and trying to call for all of their release, is in fact in complicity, turning its blind head, or not so blind head, away from something that it ought to be speaking to. If Mumia and Julian and Chelsea were in another country, they would be talking about them being victimized and violated, by their human rights being violated. But when they're here in this country, exposing human rights violation that is this war machine, ah, something else is in the mix. But let's, let's understand also that the United States government has a whole lot more political prisoners than these three human beings. And even though we had some modest breakthroughs recently on Mumia's case, a, a judge said that Mumia can reappeal his conviction based on some hypocrisy that went down on one of the decisions uh, involving his prior appeals, wherein a judge who was supposed to recuse himself from Mumia's case on the appellate level because he was a prosecutor when Mumia's case was uh, in his office because he didn't do that and then lied and said that he had nothing to do with it. Mumia is giving a, a new round of appeals to hopefully turn around his predicament. And while we might get a little excited about that, we not, need not get too excited because there has had not been a court anywhere from the Supreme Court down to the State Appeals Court in, in the state of Pennsylvania that has come anywhere near touching any of the hard evidence that clearly reveals Mumia's innocence. That's trying to simply tie this thing up on legal technicalities on the fairness of whether or not he got a fair trial. And that's bullshit, right? Mumia needs to be free. is innocent, right? Assange, Chelsea did some brave things in the name of peace, in the name of humanity, right? If whatever they have gone through, time served, they need to be released, they need to be left alone, and they need to be free to continue to go on with their lives. And that's the long and the short of it. But we here in New Jersey, and I can't stand here in New Jersey and talk about political prisoners without talking about some others. New Jersey. It's been the make or break state for the fate of Sundiata Akoli. My Panther comrades has been in prison 46 years. 46 years for the turnpike attack on exit 9 back on May 2nd, 1973 that would land him and Asada in prison. The comrade Zayed Shakur was killed in that incident as was a state trooper who was killed in that incident. And that was one of the most ridiculous cases and miscarriages of justice that you can imagine. The very police officer, the very state trooper involved in that case that was the, their key witness, the one who started all the shooting and actually fled the scene and left his partner. Yeah, he did. His name is Harper. Fled the scene. Didn't know what happened to his part. Didn't know if he shot him or if any, whatever else happened. Fled the scene and then did not report what happened when he got back to his barracks. He was so shook up. But he the one that started all the shooting and the record is clear that when it happened, Asada had her hands up when she was shot in the collarbone and shot in the back. 46 years later, she has a $2 million price on her head and lives in the shadows and the protection of the Cuban Revolution. Some of us who know it and love her dearly, even in our travels back and forth to Cuba, we do not have access to her because they're taking the threats against her that are going on in this climate very, very serious. And we're thankful 
to the Cuban Revolution for that. And we're telling Trump, we're giving him a big, big middle finger as he rescind, rescinds all rights of people that have been going on for the last four years to travel to Cuba for educational and cultural and recreational purposes. He rescinds those orders. We need to rescind his presidency. One of the most criminal elements that the White House has seen since the filthy days of Richard Tricky Dick criminal Nixon and that joker's walking around trying to lay the groundwork not only to steal another election in 2020 like he stole the election in 2016 not only that but to stack the deck against some of the most basic principles that came out of the fruit of our struggle in the 1950s, 1960s and early 1970s he has already stacked the Supreme Court with a bunch of racist sexist, ball heads are uh, licking their bleeding fangs to overturn Roe versus Wade. He's already stacked the Supreme Court or licking their chops to overthrow, overturn Brown versus Board of Education, one of the most, uh, the, the key case that led to key civil rights le legislation and the end to lynching in this country as we know it. Already they're lined up to set us back on those fronts. And we can't, this is no time to be sitting this one out. We need to tell Trump, get your behind, get your hands off of Venezuela. Leave the people of Venezuela the hell alone. The, the right to self-determination applies to every nation on this country, including countries that you might not like or, my, or that might not like your behind. We need to tell Trump, leave Iran the hell alone. Iran ain't bothering nobody. You the one who want to be the bully trying to pick this fight because your behind is under fire here in this country. So you want to create some more military diversions to keep that pressure off of your corruption, off of your chicanery, off of your filth, and off of your foul play. No, we dare say Trump must go. Trump must go. Trump must go. Trump must go, Trump must go. By hook or crook, Trump must go. By election or de-election, Trump must go. Under charges of prosecution, or the people just pulling his behind out of the, making the White House the filth house, Trump must go. Trump must go, Trump must go, Trump must go, Trump must go. And this is on our watch. We can't bring the great freedom fighters of the previous age here and now. What's happening now in this ridiculous attempt to turn history backwards, and it has happened before. Oh yes, it has happened before. After the end of the Civil War, there was a period called Reconstruction. And during that period, there were more advances made by black people coming off the plantations than you see right now in this particular period, until an election took place. In 1876, a close election took place between a Dixiecrat and a corporate uh, wannabe uh, Republican. And, and, and true to form that Trump definitely appreciated, the, the Dixiecrat went to the Republican to say, hey, his name was uh, Samuel Tilden. He went to Rutherford B. Hayes and said, hey, Rutherford, let's make a deal. <laughs> can't make this stuff up. Come on, fella, let's make a deal. I'm going to get out of your way. I'm going to give you the White House. But this is what you got to do. You got to take all those federal troops and leave us to our Negroes because we know how to take care of our Negroes. And, and Hayes went along with it. He went into the outhouse, and we went into the doghouse of segregation, of Jim Crow terror, and of lynching, and it took us almost 90 years to get out of that. History does not always move forward. It can, in fact, move backward. And on this particular moment, at this particular time, at this particular instance in history, at this moment, right here, right now, it is up to us to see whether or not, to be the determinants, whether or not history actually dares to leap forward in the name of trying to create something better and different than what this is, or is pushed backwards behind people not having their eyes open and having been hoodwinked 
to not taking a stand and let the right wing run amok in our lives and taking back from us hard fought victories and rights that were granted as a consequence of our blood being spilled here in these racist, sexist, blood sucking United States. That's the time that we're in. So we dare say, in the name of all of our political prisoners, from Sunniata to Jalil uh, to Ed Poindexter, political prisoners who almost been locked up for almost 50 years from the Black Panther tradition. The move nine, there's only three move political prisoners left, been in prison since 1978, have served their time. They need to be released. And for the political prisoners who are highlighted in this rally, all of whom need to be released in the interest of justice. So, whether that happens or not is up to us. Those of us whose eyes are open, those of us who dare stand on principle, those of us who fear not the need to speak truth to power, those of us who recognize this cutting edge moment that we are in right here, right now. So the task is clear uh, and the lines have been drawn. As we used to say back in the day, which side are you on? Which side are you on? Right on, right on, right on. Which side are you on? Are you on the side of the people of Venezuela to be in control of their own destiny, to change their own reality, to use their own mineral and natural wealth, wealth to, to build up their society the way any people have the right to do? Or are you with the regime change monsters who don't give a damn about democracy, self-determination, or human development? Are you on the side of the Cuban Revolution? The revolution that has shared more of its resources with the entire world than all of the countries of the northern hemisphere and its west and its all and all of their allies put together. And Cuba ain't no bigger than 11 million people. Ain't no bigger than New York City. And it is not at all a mineral or natural resource wealthy country. Are you on the side of Mumia? Are you on the side of Assange? Are you on the side? of Chelsea and Manning, are you on the side of our freedom fighters who have been wrongly repressed and locked down for decades, or are you on the side of the interest of justice calling for the release and calling for an order that does not criminalize dissent, but makes a space for dissent to be healthy, hearty, and fully protected, because that's what they say democracy is supposed to mean. Which side are you on? 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 I would dare hope that you would wake up, stand up, and be on the side of righteousness. Wake up, stand up, be on the side of what's principled. Wake up, stand up, be on the side of what's truthful. Wake up, stand up, and recognize historical moment. Standing on the shoulders of some of our greatest freedom fighters, those who dared make a difference at the expense of their very lives for a, great, a better day, a better world, and a more humane system that we can all live under in the name of brotherhood, democracy, freedom, justice, and equality, and peace. So with that, I got to step off and get to and put some pressure on some pigs on the question of police brutality in the neighboring town of Elizabeth, New Jersey. I hope a thousand people come out while I leave, and if they don't, whoever comes out was supposed to be here. The question is, is clear, the task is clear, the time is now, for us to do what it is that we must do. Mr. Watanik, Mr. Watanik, sir, I'm giving you back your microphone, sir. I gotta take my behind Elizabeth and turn it up on some pigs in Elizabeth. All power to the people. All power to the people. All power to the people. Hands off Venezuela. Hands off Cuba. Free all political prisoners. Free all political prisoners we're seeing the world with. Teresa and Renee over here. We got um, David. We got Diane. We got Jay and Avram. And we're out here saying that we want to see the freedom for political prisoners. Now, political prisoners, you guys got a minute to hang out for a sec? Yeah, so, so political prisoners, you can, well just listen as you go. Political prisoners are those who stand up 
for change and end up incarcerated for that. And the United States uses incarceration and the threat of the death penalty as a means to control the population. And we're out here saying free all, free all the political prisoners. Free Julian Assange. Right now, Julian Assange is facing potential death penalty. 17 count espionage indictment for the crime of exposing U.S. war crimes. Now let's be clear here. The United States is dropping a bomb on someone's head every 12 minutes somewhere on the planet. And you don't get to see who's being bombed or the results of that. That information is not shared by most of the mass media. The reason being is because the corporate-owned media takes the cue from the CIA and the National Security State. So what we have is a situation in Iraq, there had been a massacre, and the United States made up some kind of reason that they were combatants, and they died in combat. But a video was released showing that they were civilians and they were slaughtered for nothing. The video was released by Chelsea Manning to WikiLeaks. It was reported and much of the media picked it up and ran with it. They sold lots of papers and lots of ads on websites, etc. But the United States wants to be able to send a message to reporters to anyone who has information about U.S. war crimes, that if you drop a dime on a U.S. war crime, you're going to end up doing some time. That's the message the United States is trying to say. And we're out here saying, we got your back. We got your back, Julian Assange. We got your back, Chelsea Manning. We got your back, Mumia Bojamal. And we're ready to struggle. And we want to send a clear message that we know how to support each other when someone becomes under attack because they took a stand. It is up to us here today and then again tomorrow. We need to send a message to the United States government. Mass incarceration, using incarceration as a form of counterinsurgency, we ain't having it. We're saying no to that. We're saying free Assange, free Mumia, free Chelsea, free the volunteers that provide water to immigrants. That's right. Folks are facing 20 years for providing water along the U.S. border with Mexico. That's right, people are facing 20 years for giving water along the border with Mexico. The United States is at war with its own people. The United States is at war with immigrants. And if you give immigrants water, they want to lock you away for 20 years. That's the stuff of death squad regime. It's up to us to say, free Assange, free Chelsea, free Mumia. All right, what am I going to say? Okay, we got Fred uh, taping us, so I better say something profound. Uh, I want to thank Bob and the uh, Hands Off Venezuela Collective for organizing this rally. This is important. Uh, the message we're sending out, Hands Off, Chelsea Manning, Hands Off, uh, give me all the names, Julian Assange, of course, who's being tortured uh, in London as we speak, Mumia Abu-Jamal, Leonard Peltier, and all political prisoners who have been on the front lines of fighting this monster of U.S. imperialism, the U.S. capitalist system. And we're fighting as well, right here in the belly of the beast, right here 
in Newark. And it's crucial. We've got a number of different struggles uh, here in Newark. Obviously, we're, we're part of this global campaign to free Julian Assange. We want to defend, we want to free, uh, as the poster says, free Julian Assange now. The last thing he should be is in a prison. He should be honored for the courage of exposing the crimes, the real criminals of, of U.S. imperialism, along with Chelsea Manning, uh, Leonard Peltier, and Mumia Abu-Jamal. But we've got a number of other struggles here. Uh, we're right here at the uh, Hall of Records, the headquarters of the county government, led by Joseph DiVincenzo, who, on behalf of the Trump administration, run one of the largest ice concentration camps in the country. Uh, and my organization, Jobs and Equal Rights for All, a group I'm part of, is part of a campaign to end that contract and to win legalization for all. But that's not the only struggle. We've got the struggle to win clean water. We have lead poison water here in Newark, and that's not isolated in Newark. That's around the country. We've got the struggle around housing, affordable housing. The Baraka administration is working with these big developers, giving them all kinds of subsidies to gentrify. So gentrify, gentrification does not just drop from the sky, right? There's intervention by the government, by the state here, including at the local state. So they're driving people out at the same time. The Baraka administration is working with Trump to demolish, to uh, get rid of the, the Terrell homes in the Ironbound, which is the center of the gentrification effort going on. We've got the struggle around higher education, the continuing increase in tuition at these so-called public universities. We've got university hospital that's on life support that's being cut back. We've got many different struggles. And the only way that we're going to be able to make any advances is if, if we unite in common struggle with common demands. And central to those demands are make the rich pay. We're not going to make any kind of advances unless we take back the trillions the billionaires have stolen from us. So based on that, we're going to be having a, re a demonstration we hope everyone will be out. We hope the Green Party will be joining us June 15th, Saturday, June 15th, at the offices of Eliana Pintor Marine, who is the assemblywoman from here in New Newark, and she is also an assistant county administrator. So in her job is administering the county for Joe D. She happily, happily, with joy, administers the blood money contract to imprison immigrants, to terrorize immigrants uh, right here in Newark. And let's be clear, these ICE jails are obviously targeting immigrants, but they're targeting the entire working class. Because if you can terrorize one group of workers, that's going to weaken and drive down the wages of all workers. So she happily carries that blood money contract out. At the same time, in the assembly, she is opposing even the minimal millionaire's tax that the uh, Governor Murphy, who we're no friends of, uh, but Governor Murphy is proposing. So she's made it clear. She has no problem. She celebrates generating funds by a blood money contract, right? She supports the billions in corporate welfare that the EDA, the Economic Development Authority, hands out. But she opposes, she is leading the fight in the assembly against Murphy's even minimal uh, millionaire's tax. And we say, no way. We are uniting our forces on June 15th. I've got a flyer we handed out to folks, I've handed out to some, where we're saying, make the billionaires pay, make the rich pay, not immigrants, not the working class. So that's our message on June 15th. Make the rich pay. Make the rich pay. Make the billionaires pay, not immigrants. And we call for a massive redistribution of all the tax on the income and wealth 
of the billionaires class to fought and ending the U.S. war machine. And that directly connects us to Julian Assange and Chelsea Manning uh, and Peltier and Mumia Abu-Jamal. We say end the U war machine to create a mass direct government employment, public works program, jobs for all, free public services for all, education, health care, housing, a uh, mass program to develop safe, alternative, cheap uh, energy source to preserve the planet. So we're coming together, and we've got to run our own candidates. That's the other key part of building an effective movement. We have to have our own democratically run candidates on our program. We have two candidates, Yolanda Johnson and Michelle Velasquez, running in the 29th district. And we can take a lesson from here in Newark. If folks remember, we had a Raz Baraka who tied himself to the movement defending public education, which Evron Rips was a central part of. He solidarized with that movement. That is the reason he got elected. But he was not democratically controlled. So once he got in power, he did a 180 degree turn just like Gibson did to Barack, I'm reading actually Amiri Baraka's autobiography, and I highly encourage um, people to read it. He talks about how they put Gibson in power, was his movement, their movement, uh, on a platform. But once he got into power, he threw them to the curb, right? And that's just what Barack did, because we can't have candidates. Uh, we have to have democratically small D candidates that are beholden to the movement. So we see here in Newark where the current mayor has support, is supporting the charters 100%. Uh, so that's the message here. Uh, so that's my message. I'm going to hand it back over to Brother Bob, who's been on the front lines of leading this fight to defend Venezuela, to defend Julian Assange, Mumi Abu Jamal, Chelsea Manning, Leonard Peltier, and all political prisoners. So we're hoping to see Bob and the Greens, who just left, they uh, before I could give them the flyer, they disappeared. Uh, but we, we're going to be we're going to be uh, expanding this movement. We're not going away. We're taking it. We're taking this fight to the enemy, directly to the enemy, the Democratic Party, the deportation Democrats, who are shoulder to shoulder. They talk a good line, right? That they oppose Trump. But when we look at the attack on immigrants. They're shoulder to shoulder. When we look at the attack on these strugglers, these freedom fighters, Julian Assange, Chelsea Manning, Mumi Aja, they're shoulder to shoulder. Here are attacks in the rich. They're shoulder to shoulder with the Republicans. So they're phonies. They're a phony operation. They're with the billionaire class. They're really with Trump, despite the rhetoric. And that underscores the need for us to build a real political alternative, and that's crucial for defending our brothers and sisters in Venezuela. Okay, now, we've been out here for about an hour. It's a very hot day. Before we break up, I would like to, uh, I'll have to do a repair job on that makeshift banner I put together, but I'd like to take a picture of us behind the banner. But um, just want to uh, say, uh, is there anyone else who wants to say anything? David? Avram? Diane? Right. So basically, we're out here today to say that we got the back of those who are facing mass incarceration and those who are being incarcerated for blowing the whistle on the truth of U.S. war crimes and for leading struggle of resistance to oppression. And we're also out here to say that the United States got to stop incarcerating hundreds of thousands and millions of people for minimalist offenses like narcotics, drugs, cannabis, small scale economic crimes like kiting a check or, or shoplifting. When you got banks that force Millions of foreclosures by proffering illegal foreclosure contracts and documents. And they don't even get 
any kind of trouble. As a matter of fact, they get bailed out by the United States government. So, I would like to see if, if we can, perhaps in a few weeks or so, come back and organize a stronger protest for the political prisoners, also connected to the other issues. Take a picture and I'll, I'll I'm gonna leave and then you're gonna come in. Yeah, yeah. Five seconds. Yeah, but it's M-A-R. What do we got going on here today? We were, uh, we had a rally, demanding freedom for political prisoners. Yeah, that's our right to like uh, protest. Uh, oh, I just want you to know what you guys are protesting. Yeah, we're protesting saying free Assange, free Chelsea Manning, free Momia, free the Move 9. We're all political prisoners, everyone who stood up. And we said we got your back, and we're about to struggle, and we're telling the government that we're not going to stand by while it uses mass incarceration as a form of uh, counterinsurgency. Right. Expecting more, uh, more people. Yeah. <laughs> it's the first meeting. First meeting. Yeah. We it's had the like first, 100 uh, before you got here. No way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they, they come and they all ran. <laughs> <laughs> the the one, day, one day we shall be thousands. Yes. Also part of the movement that closed down uh, Joe D and uh, Armando Fontora's ice gel here. Yeah. You guys might have been out there at some of the protests at the prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're all part of the same group. Well, yeah, I just wanted to be informed about what was going on. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, we, this is like a, this is like the, uh, plus this is like the area of justice of the county, you know. So this is an appropriate place to make demands of justice. So yeah. And plus Lincoln, you know. And we're running. Uh, we, we like we everyone all together. All, yeah, we all got different different like organizations. Yeah. Anti-war agenda, jobs, peace, and justice. Um, you know, there was a few other. Green Party was here before. Uh, uh, PLP was here before. I'm gonna try to make, I don't let you know, but I'm trying to We're only getting yeah, warmed up. Sure, but I can. Right. Right. Yeah. Good. I appreciate that, guys. But we're, we're all wrapped up. You should have come an hour earlier if you wanted to shut us down, but we're all, we're all wrapped up. <laughs> I'm just getting started. Then <laughs> we should start over. We're gonna take the street. Yeah. 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 Yeah.